Hello, everyone. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Tracy Lamondu, and I am Vice President of Development at AGU. And I am so happy to see all of you today. And I am really excited about the Data Visualization and Storytelling Prize. And I'll tell you a little bit about why. So I'm a little nervous, so I'm going to read what I wrote. AGU and NASA have partnered over the past six years on a data visualization and storytelling competition. This competition provides an opportunity for students to demonstrate creative ways to use visualization and storytelling to present complex problems in earth and space science. So all of you are here are probably genius or just shy of genius because as a non-scientist, I love the work that you do and I learn from it. And I will tell you that we have all been delighted to learn from your presentations, as well as to learn of the many ways in which that this work can be utilized. Many of the winners have proceeded to have employment with organizations and companies who utilize this, this complex data as part of their work. So we are so thrilled to have you here. I also want to share with you the name of this program. This program is named Michael H. Freilich Student Visualization Competition after a much beloved long-term NASA employee who I had the pleasure of meeting, who decided that we should do this. He was students, 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 and a, a wonderful human being. So you are all recipients of the idea and dream of someone who came before you who thought it worthy to acknowledge this work. So congratulations, thank you for being here, and I'm gonna let Kristen Erickson speak to you now. Come on. Well, it's my absolute privilege to be up here with my friend Tracy. Um, this is a tough one for us because Michael, was so beloved to so many in the scientific community. And so we thought we would talk a little bit for you all that are getting this tremendous honor so that you knew a little bit more about Michael. So Michael Freilich was a um, educator first. He was a professor, he went to Oregon State, loved that West Coast, but when he came to headquarters, he totally revitalized Earth science at NASA, okay? And I would say for the world. But first and foremost, what Michael cared about was family, okay? Now, I'm just going to tell you, I don't care how old you get, it's all about making your family proud. We have kids, we're constantly thinking, huh, not only do we not want to embarrass them, <laughs> but we want to make our family proud. And that's what Michael was about as well. He had a wicked sense of humor, wickedly dry sense of humor. He was the smartest person in the room, and so he would make these quips, and very few people got it, but when someone else in the room got his joke, he would have this twinkle in his eye, and I remember the first time that happened with me, and I thought, I think I might have arrived, you know, because I got, he was so brilliant. But the other thing I remember about Michael is he was so accessible anytime I needed anything, anything at all at NASA headquarters, and we worked together for about six years, his door was always open. So I go into his very messy office, which I felt very at home with. You know, for people that have really uh, neat offices, that's not me, but Michael knew where everything was in his office, and he would say, sit down. Usually he'd be having his lunch while he was working. And, you know, and we would chat about whatever problem or whatever situation was on my mind. And I always got the best advice because he always worried, not about himself, but he worried about the science first and how we could all make the science better. So I wanted to share those couple of stories and anecdotes with you because as you go through your very successful careers, and I know you're nervous right now about, you know, maybe your presentation coming up here. But, you know, Michael would say, take a deep breath, 
It's going to be okay. You're going to be just fine. Now, for those of us in the room here that used to work with Michael, every single one of us has a, a story, a personal story of our interaction, and it makes us smile. So when you're done with your presentations, feel free to, you know, talk to Steve and talk to uh, Mark and others and ask them what their favorite Michael story is, and you'll just be amazed. There's a spacecraft named after uh, Michael now. I always called him Michael, but other people call him Mike. But you're also the recipient of this tremendous visualization award. Now, why was this so important to him? He always wanted to share the science most broadly. And he was always thinking of ways to do that. And now that we have all these tools, he would just be so thrilled to be here and see all the beautiful creative work that you have, have accomplished. So without further ado, we're going to call up the award winners. We had four yesterday, so we have three today. Yes? And so we're going to uh, call them up for a presentation and a photo op. And so the first is Christina Last for MIT. And so Steve, where would you like us to be? Over here? OK. So Mark is pointing us over here. Congratulations. Thank We're so much. proud of you. This is really a huge honor. And I know, I mean, I can't wait to see your presentation. But just don't worry, it's going to go fine. Okay, so we're going to... Congratulations. Okay, stay up on the stage, and we're going to ask Otto Breiner. Did I pronounce that right? Yay, me. No, no, no. It's okay. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank and you so Otto much. is from the University of Illinois, uh, Chicago. So you're local. I are you? Are you here. Yeah. Uh, in the rain. All right. You're Not you're my much. hero. All right. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. And next up is Benjamin Yang from Columbia University. I don't know, Tracy, this is the best part of our job, know, don't you think? Really, absolutely. Hi, Benjamin, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, you, you still got a book in there. Yeah, yeah. 